Welcome to another video of the Willow Creek Railroad. In this video we'll talk about the digital command control system used to run this 400 square foot HO scale layout. We'll talk about the various components of the control system and how they relate to each other and then some of the standards and guidelines that I use to install the system on the Willow Creek. Proper installation of the digital command control system more commonly known as a DCC system, is one of the most important criteria for ensuring a smoothly operating layout. The Willow Creek layout is controlled using MRC's Prodigy Wireless DCC system. I chose the MRC DCC system because it's an easy to use, yet very powerful, completely wireless, duplex radio control system. The primary DCC system components can be seen in this view of the main power control panel beneath the layout's benchwork. The MRC Prodigy Wireless DCC system consists of a DCC command station and power supply and wireless throttles. The throttles communicate wirelessly with the command station to issue all commands to program and operate locomotives as desired. The Willow Creek is designed to keep as many as five operators busy concurrently, so the system has five wireless throttles. One of the really nice features of the MRC system is that the throttles run on rechargeable batteries that can be recharged without removing them from the throttle. I've built a recharging station consisting of a powered and non-powered Prodigy extension panel to enable all five throttles to be recharged between operating sessions. The Prodigy Command Station is a 3 one half amp system, sufficient to run the entire roster of locomotives on the layout, all of which are equipped with sound decoders. Since Waverly Yard is a busy place with a high concentration of locomotives, a separate 3 one half amp booster has been installed to specifically support the yard. The layout has two power control panels. The main panel provides power to all parts of the layout except for Waverly Yard. The panel supports four power subdistricts. This means that the power from the main DCC command station is wired through four PSX solid state circuit breakers, as you see here, developed by DCC Specialties Company. Since the layout includes two reversing loops, the top and bottom circuit breakers seen here also have automatic reversing capabilities to automatically switch the polarity of the track as required. The MRC booster routes power to the second power control panel located beneath Waverly Yard. This panel supports two power subdistricts, again each protected by PSX circuit breakers. The layout was designed so that the circuit breaker protecting the yard's turntable and roundhouse tracks is also capable of automatically reversing the track polarity. This was not actually required, however, since I'm using a Walther's turntable designed to eliminate the need to reverse polarities. One final component installed on the main power control panel is of note. I've installed a Soundtracks Programming Track Booster, a PTB100, that enables me to program and read all decoders on the programming track, which is located in front of the main control panel. Now let's take a look at how the DCC system has been installed. Based on a lot of reading and education about DCC systems, I established and followed a strict set of standards and guidelines for the DCC system's installation. The DCC command station is located near the center of the main layout, which ensures that the DCC buses, which use 12 gauge solid wire here on the layout, are never longer than 30 feet. A bus longer than about 30 feet could cause undesirable variations in the DCC signal and may require the use of one or more snubbers. These problems have been avoided on the Willow Creek layout. 18 gauge feeder wires run from the DCC bus to the track and are connected to the bus using suitcase connectors. A good pair of channel lock pliers is all you need to properly install the suitcase connectors. A pair of feeder wires runs to each and every section of track on the layout. This means that there is a power feeder at least once every three feet of track. Track on the Willow Creek layout does not rely on rail joiners to route power. To minimize the resistance associated with these feeder wires, the length of each feeder wire is typically less than 10 inches long. In addition, a pair of feeder wires runs to every turnout on the layout. Number four and number six turnouts have unpowered frogs, since these are short enough to not cause electrical connectivity problems for locomotives. Number eight turnouts on the layout have powered frogs to ensure sufficient connectivity, since these frogs are more than two inches long. 
This power is provided through the tortoise switch machines that operate the turnouts. And finally, the DCC power is only used to power track. Separate power systems have been installed to support the tortoise switch machines, automatic signal system, and scenic lighting such as buildings and street lights. This ensures that the DCC system is never accidentally overloaded by non-track related applications. Special care was taken when the DCC power wires were installed to avoid an accidental short. It's very easy to accidentally connect feeder wires to the wrong bus wire or track rail, especially as the track snakes around the layout. To help avoid this problem, I connected a buzzer to a 9 volt battery and then connected the unit to the track in a power subdistrict as I was installing the feeder wires. If I accidentally connected the feeder wires to the wrong bus wire or track rail, the buzzer would immediately alert me to the fact that I'd caused a short. Plans and discussions for this type of short detection unit can be found on the internet. Finally, don't forget the importance of documentation. The Willow Creek has a comprehensive technical reference manual that shows the DCC power subdistricts, power control panels, auxiliary power systems, automatic signal systems, and other key aspects of the layout's design. This documentation is invaluable in troubleshooting a problem or supporting a change on the layout. The approach used to install the DCC system on the Willow Creek layout ensured that the wiring of the layout was correct on day one when the power was first turned on and that the layout has operated without any associated problems for more than six years. This completes our discussion of the DCC system on the Willow Creek layout. I hope that this information has been of benefit to you. Additional information can be found on the layout's website. Thanks for watching.